Hi, I just wanted to give some instructions here for the deep tree investigation assignment. Um, so again, learning intention on this one, we're learning about how to classify organisms so we can figure out how biologically similar they are to each other. Again, when we think about this deep tree, evolutionary trees, phylogenetic trees, it's a lot like thinking about a family tree. Um, close branches represent groups that are closely related to one another. Distant branches are more distantly related. But whenever you find a connection point between those branches, you know that you're dealing with some ancient ancestor of that group, whether we're talking about um, different species of animals and uh, or if we're talking about human beings just looking at a family tree. So success criteria, I'll be successful when I can determine groupings that two organisms share with each other and talk about what makes that grouping unique. And I can describe why using a phylogenetic tree would be important for scientists researching organisms. So we're going to be using um, an online program. It's Nova's Deep Tree program. So you click on the link in the assignment to access um, that lab. So again, it'll, it'll take you to this page, and then you just want to click on this hexagon over here that says Deep Tree. That'll take you to this section. And then I would highly recommend um, clicking on, I don't know if it's actually visible right now. Let me move my Screencastify controls just in case. Um, this little video icon down here, you can click on that video icon to play a little video about how DeepTree works and just kind of monitor that as you're going through it. <clears throat> but we'll just do a demonstration of um, the relate function here in a minute for uh, the DeepTree lab that's uh, based on the instructions for this assignment. Um, so when you look at that option down toward the bottom, click the relate option to on and use its search feature to figure out what humans have in common with different organisms. So we're gonna go through one example together here with humans and lactobacillus. So down here, I click the relate option. Sorry, I have to move yet another thing from Screencastify. Click the Relate option and turn that to On. So here it gives us Species 1 and Species 2. So Species 1, in this case, is always going to be humans. So when I type in human, it's going to show a few different options here. Humans is the one I want at the top here, Homo sapiens. So I click that. So now humans is on one side of the Relate option. And then if I type in the start of the next name, Lacto, L-A-C-T-O, here's Lactobacillus. So now I want to figure out how these two organisms are related to each other. I click the magnifying glass, and it's zooming out just a little bit because these two are not very closely related. This is the tree of like all these different organisms on Earth, and they're pretty far back. Um, so I can even use my mouse to scroll in a little bit to where I'm looking at. But I want to see where these two match up as far as clicking on this DNA icon. So again, it says here there is a shared ancestry. Lactobacillus bacteria, so again, we're talking about comparing bacteria here to humans, share an ancestor that lived about 3.5 billion years ago, so very distantly related. Um, so they've evolved independently. Um, so when we look at the category, the most recent category that they both share is just life. They're living things. If there were something higher up, let's say that they were both amniotes, there'd be a DNA icon up there, and I would want to click the highest DNA icon to get an indicator of like, okay, what's their closest relationship? But in this case, they're so distantly related that we're just looking at life. So I click on that. And when I click on that, it gives me a description of living things. So lactobacillus bacteria and humans are both living things. All life on earth shares the same material of inheritance, nucleic acid strings or genes passed on from generation to generation. So again, if I'm looking here at my chart, the most recent related category for both of those organisms is life, or we can say living things. And the characteristics of that category, they have genes. That's something that separates living things from non-living things in the world. So again, we're doing this for multiple different organisms. Again, um, I can exit out of that and basically replace lactobacillus with the next category is going to be sunflower. So just to show you that it's going to zoom in here a little bit as far as the tree. So again, it's zoomed in a little bit, not a lot. But again, we'll click on that DNA icon to help us fill out the rest of it. So again, we're comparing humans and sunflowers, humans and western honeybees, humans and placodermy, humans and the tiger salamander, humans and the common box turtle, humans and trichodonts. 
um, humans and ring-tailed lemurs. And then here at the very end, you're just going to pick two organisms of your choice that are included in Deep Tree. And again, you'll look for which category they share where you can click on the DNA icon, get some info about it, and the characteristics of that level. Again, it might be something that's part of a level you've already filled out on there. That's totally fine. Then after you're done filling out the chart, you just have two questions to answer here on the second part of the sheet. Number one, what did you notice when you went from the top to the bottom in the chart as far as comparing humans to the other organisms in the chart? Did it seem like the organisms we compared to humans were more similar or more different from humans as you got to the bottom? So again, think about as you're moving from lactobacillus, again, the bacteria that are up here, to ring-tailed lemurs, a type of primate down here. Does it seem like we've got more things in common as we're going down or less things in common as we're going down? And then two, how could scientists use this information for things they want to study about organisms? What is an example of when it would be important to know how closely or how distantly related another organism is to a human? We've talked a little bit about this in class as far as just when we've talked in general about why is it important to study zoology, but really think about, you know, how could I apply this specific knowledge about, you know, how related or unrelated two animals are you know, how can that benefit my understanding? So uh, that's it as far as this assignment. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the Nova tool is pretty easy to use. Again, click on the video link on the Nova Deep Tree if you need another little refresher on how to use it. Um, it gives a, a nice thorough explanation and feel free to explore around, you know, look for things even outside of what's on the chart if you're curious about, you know, how related two organisms are to each other. But either way, I hope you find this to be an interesting activity, and um, I hope these instructions made sense. If you have any questions, just please feel free to contact me.